All right, so we're going to use a different uh, set of uh, rules for constructing molecular compounds. And of course, the difference between molecular compounds and ionic compounds is that mo molecules are between non-metals. And they are sharing valence electrons, not transferring them or forming ions. And so, since these uh, atoms don't have a charge, we can't figure out the correct formula from them by, you know, using the um, must equal neutral charge type of logic. So instead, uh, a couple of ways to figure out the formula for these compounds is one, drawing the uh, electron dot structures of the different elements or electron dot symbols, and then figuring out how they connect to uh, form the octet rule or satisfy the octet rule. Okay, so let's think about uh, a simple molecule like water. Water is H2O. Why is it H2O and not other another uh, mechanism or some other formula? Excuse me. Uh, why isn't it H3O or HO2? And that is because, of course, hydrogen has one valence electron. Oxygen has six. And since uh, there are two hydrogen atoms to bond with it, it will share the uh, valence electrons, uh, one valence electron each with each uh, hydrogen atom to form the molecule like this, where we represent the shared covalent bond as a single line. That's why we said when introducing the concept of a covalent bond that it is a pair of electrons that each elect or each atom is sharing. So now we can see that since uh, this oxygen atom is sharing electrons with these two hydrogen atoms, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight valence electrons. And so it satisfies the octet rule. If you remember, hydrogen can uh, satisfy what I call the duet rule by getting to two valence electrons to be just like helium. And so hydrogen will always form one bond uh, to get to two valence electrons in a very stable configuration. Okay, so uh, what else can elements do? Well, or atoms do to form compounds? Well, all of the oxygen we're breathing in right now is... O2, a diatomic molecule. And so what happens is that oxygen atoms, again, with six valence electrons, will bond with each other to get eight valence electrons. And in this scenario, instead of just forming a one single bond, because that only gets each oxygen atom seven valence electrons, it will actually form a double covalent bond or share two pairs of electrons between the two oxygen atoms. And so when we write the oxygen molecule, O2, we write it with two lines in between. And that, of course, is a covalent double bond. And of course, uh, there can be a scenarios where we can set up three bonds, and that's occurring in all of the nitrogen molecules that we're breathing in. Nitrogen comprises the majority, almost 80% of the atmosphere, so most of the molecules that we're breathing in are actually nitrogen. Nitrogen, because it's in group five, I know that it has five valence electrons. And so, uh, what it does to get to the octet rule is it will share not one pair of electrons like water or two pairs of electrons like oxygen. It will actually share three pairs of valence electrons with each with another nitrogen atom so that it can get the octet rule. If you look, um, since both of these shared, all of these uh, shared electrons count for both atoms, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons for each atom and so we get the octet rule and that of course is a covalent triple bond
And so when uh, we are trying to figure out the molecule, the formulas for molecules, it's not um, a question of the charge. It's more of a question of how many bonds does each atom need to form to get to the octet rule to have a stable electron configuration just like the noble gases. So if we think about uh, an atom like carbon, carbon has four valence electrons. And so it would need to react with four hydrogen atoms to form, uh, to get to the octet rule. So all carbon atoms have four bonds when they form a stable molecule. And so CH4 is methane, the simplest organic compound, and it has four hydrogen atoms so that each carbon atom get the octet rule. Nitrogen typically forms three bonds in molecules so that it can get to the octet rule. In nitrogen and two, the molecule, a uh, diatomic molecule, we saw it formed a triple bond, but if it reacts with hydrogen or forms a molecule with hydrogen, it would actually form a three single bonds with each of three hydrogen atoms to get to a stable configuration of the octet rule. And so nitrogen, when it forms a molecule with hydrogen, would form NH3 or ammonia molecule.